Hi, I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're gonna shuck some oysters and open some clams. So what we're gonna learn today is how to buy oysters and clams, how to store them, how to open them, and how to clean them. Uh, maybe not in that order, but it'll definitely be a, a nice tutorial on how to handle these bivalves. Uh, and that's what oysters and clams are, they're bivalves. They're filter feeders. Uh, they live on the bottom of uh, usually brackish water, which means there's a lot of sea, there's sea water and there's, um, there's fresh water coming together. So you'll see these in estuaries, which where lakes and streams and seawater come together. Uh, and you know, there's a great book by this guy, Mark Krulansky, called The, the Big Oyster. And New York's uh, Hudson Bay or uh, uh, New York Harbor used to be one of the biggest oyster suppliers in the world. And the oysters coming out of New York Harbor used to be some of the best until it got polluted. I had the pleasure of going on a Cops Island oyster boat years ago with my wife and kids with the company that I was working with. And they showed us the whole process of how they harvest their oysters and how they take care of them and to ensure that people actually get to eat them in a healthy way. They're not allowed to harvest oysters after it rains because there's a lot of runoff and that could get people sick. They tag the oysters so that they know exactly where they were harvested, exactly when. So there's a lot of safety concerns when it comes to eating oysters. And I know that worries a lot of people, but if you have a reputable dealer and you're happy with the product or you, you've had their product before, stick with them, right? Don't go for the cheap oysters that are like bargain basement oysters that are 10 cents each. Uh, the only thing that you can expect from that is probably getting sick. So buy good oysters, buy good clams, and know your purveyor. First thing I'm gonna talk about is how you buy buy oysters and clams. And this is pretty universal when it goes to clams, mussels, and oysters. You wanna just make sure that they're alive, believe it or not. And how do you guess that? There's no guesswork in this. What's gonna happen is, is the clams, as they get warmer, or oysters or mussels, as they get warmer, they start to open up. And all you really need to do is tap them. You tap them, and if they close up, they're good, they're still alive. If you open up and they're dead or, or they smell bad, um, when I smell clams and oysters, uh, I want it to smell like the ocean. I don't want it to smell like fish. If it smells like, uh, like fish, or that's going bad. You want them to smell like an ocean breeze. And these smell great. So tap them, make sure they're alive, and they shouldn't have a strong smell. That's the two kind of main indicators that our oysters and, and, mus and, oysters and mussels and clams are really good. So that's what you gotta do to, when you buy them. Like I said earlier, don't go for the bargain basement stuff. These oysters were really fairly cheap. They were about 60 cents each, which is a good price. You know, uh, restaurants usually charge two, three dollars for an oyster, but if you go straight to the dealer like I did, 60 cents a piece, uh, and this, like I said, is a Cops Island. The clam that I have here is a top neck, which is a slightly larger than a, a, a little neck. Um, plan on not really eating these raw. Uh, with a top neck, I usually make stuffed clams. I take the clam out and I chop it up, or I'll make linguine with clam sauce, which I plan to do with these later on down the road. Uh, but the oysters, I'm just gonna eat raw. I'm not doing anything. There's a lot of things you can do with the oysters, but I'm just gonna eat them on the half shell. They're a great quality product. The next thing we're gonna do is clean our oysters and, and clams. I keep on trying to say mussels. We don't have any mussels. I should've got mussels. That's another video of mussels. I wanna clean these, and the way that I clean them is usually under running cold water. I'm gonna do it in this bowl here, just so you can see how much dirt these come in, because they're in the sand, they're in the mud. So you wanna get all that sand and dirt off the outside. Uh, so I'm gonna do them in a bowl, but I would do this under cold running water, lightly cold running water. Um, uh, and normally what I do is I try not to submerge these for too long. I know that they live in the water, but fresh water will kill them. So don't submerge them for too long. Leave them in a strainer uh, after you clean them. But I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and here's where a lot of the dirt on the clams ends up. There's little crooks and little nooks and crannies here and over the front. So I get a brush, this brush, it's cheap. You get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. And what you wanna do is make sure that you scrub all the dirt from those little crooks 
and make sure there's no mud stuck in there. I mean, these are fairly clean. They come out of the ocean, they get rinsed off with ocean water. The whole idea is, is to get all the mud that they collect in all those nooks and crannies. So I wouldn't consider this water ne necessarily dirty in the sense of the water's gonna get you sick. I, I consider it more like it's just getting all the mud and muck. So with our oysters, there's lots of little holes and nooks and crannies, but always in this kind of joint that we're gonna dig our knife into, you want to make sure that you clean really well, right? And with these, you want to make sure you clean well because people are going to pick these up and eat the oyster out of the shell. So, you know, you don't want them to pick up and have a dirty shell. So make sure you get into all those nooks and crannies, get as much sand off as you can. Uh, there's lots here, there's lots in the, in the lip. So get under there and clean it as best as you can. This is to me a non-negotiable thing. You want to clean your seafood. Otherwise you're gonna be biting on sand and it's not delicious. The next thing on our list is to talk about properly storing these uh, bivalves, uh, the oysters, the clams, the mussels. And the proper way to do this is to keep them very cold. First thing you wanna do is keep them in the coldest part of your refrigerator, which is usually on the bottom shelves in the back. First thing. Second thing you wanna do is put them in a colander that has a bowl that can collect all the ice that drips. So I take ice, and mind you, these have been cleaned, so we want these clean. Uh, I put them in a colander, I put ice over them. You can even take a towel and put a towel over them with some water. And basically what you wanna do is keep these as cold as possible and keep them in the fridge. Ice them down in a colander. We don't want them sitting in a pool of liquid. I said it earlier, these are saltwater creatures. If you put them in fresh water, they're going to die. You don't want them to drown in fresh water. So basically what you want to do is uh, ice them down, colander with a bowl underneath to collect all the liquid. The other thing this does actually is as the ice melt melts, it washes away anything that's kind of on the surface of the clam. So they stay clean and the, any sort of bacteria that's on there, it'll, it'll help to wash that away. One tip, do not drink this liquid, it's gross. Okay, don't drink it, okay? So that's how you properly store them. Back of the fridge, ice, um, have a, a, drain, a drain bucket or a drain bowl underneath and then a cold towel on top. Proper way to store oysters, mussels, and clams. The next thing we wanna talk about is equipment. And luckily when it comes to oysters and clams, you don't need a ton of specialized equipment. I've seen people with like mesh gloves and you know, lots of things to protect themselves. But if you're just careful and use the methods that I show you here, you don't need anything like that. Uh, I mean, if you're opening 6,000 oysters a night in a restaurant, you might wanna have that because you're moving really quick. But at home, you're gonna be taking your time uh, and paying attention, right? You're gonna pay attention, right? Yes, okay. Uh, so I have an oyster knife. This is an oyster knife. You can tell it's an oyster knife because the handle is shaped like a lady curvy, uh, and then the, the, the blade has a point, a sharp point that curves. And then we have a clam knife. Clam knife looks like a paring knife or a small, you know, a small paring knife that you would cut vegetables with. Uh, the only difference between this is it has a dull tip and usually the blade is fairly dull. It should be a little sharp because you have to get into the clam, but for the most part, it has a dull blade and you don't need a very sharp blade for this. And it has kind of a straight handle. It doesn't have the curvy handle. So that's a clam knife. These are important to have. Uh, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. And uh, you're probably not gonna get hurt as bad if you use these knives. Uh, there's different styles of these uh, according to the country you live in. I know that in France, we saw some oyster knives that were a little different. And if you're comfortable with the different styles, that's absolutely fine. This knife uh, was about 12 bucks. It doesn't need to be super expensive. This one I think was six or seven dollars. I'm gonna link uh, something similar to these, maybe not the exact ones, but similar to these in, in, in the uh, description. So just look out for those links so that you can find these fairly easily. The other piece of equipment that I use is a kitchen towel. Um, we, we call these side towels in the restaurant, but a kitchen towel, it's really important to have. It gives you a very good base to work on. It also kind of protects your hand a little. So I have two kitchen towels here. Find kitchen towels you don't care about all that much that will get dirty because for the most part, they're gonna get dirty from your oysters and from your clams. So if it's a little, they're a little more ratty or beat up uh, kitchen towels, that's the one you wanna use. 
And that's all you really need to open clams and oysters. First thing we're gonna do is open a clam. There's two ways I'm gonna show you, uh, and they're, you know, they're fairly difficult. You have to have a little hand strength for this. I've practiced a lot, and even I have trouble sometimes. So I'm gonna show you the two ways to go about this, and uh, we'll see if you can do it. So the first way to go about it is to find the lip here. So in a lot of these clams, what happens is they're in a bag together, and they kind of, they're in a bag and they kind of beat each other up. So the lip gets really beat up. So it's really hard to get them by the lip. Um, I'm gonna find one that has a lip, you can see. You can see there's two here. The one in this hand, the lip is beat up and the one in this hand, the lip isn't as beat up. So I'm gonna try the one with the, 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 the lip that's not beat up first, okay? So I take my knife. I have my dominant hand is my right hand. The clam goes in my left hand. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and find the knife to fit into that lip. And then I will wrap my hand around the knife and pull. And it slides into the lip, right? So if you catch that lip really good, the knife just kind of slides right in. So if you, get a, if you get a clam that has a nice kind of clean lip, this is how you open it. And all you have to do here is use the knife. Uh, that's why these are not as sharp, but you still have to cut these two abductor muscles. The abductor, mus abductor muscles are the muscles that open and close the clam. Okay, so the next thing I do is I will take my knife and cut through the abductor muscles on either the bottom or the top, and then I flop that over onto the clam, right? And I try and, if you're having these on the half shell, you want to make sure you save all the juice, get as much juice as you can. Then you take your knife and slide this under the abductor muscles underneath, right? The key here too is not to get any shell in the clam because shell is gross. So I'm not eating these on the half shell. So I'm going to use these for like a, a linguine clam sauce or you can use them for a baked clam. But you want to make sure that it's totally detached from the shell. You cut those abductor muscles and that's how you do it the first way. The next way to do this is get the, the clam from the back end. This is where the hinge is. And I find this a little easier. Uh, I always find that getting through the lip is usually a little fussy because it slips. You'll like try and do it and it'll consistently slip and that drives me absolutely nuts. This is a little more of a power method, like you need more hand strength. So again, dominant hand, the knife's in my dominant hand, the clam is in the, in the meat of my, uh, my thumb, and all I do is I put this in and I wiggle. I get my knife there, I wiggle it, and that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna break the hinge and then the knife can slide into the lip. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna open the clam just enough so you can get into the lip. So now that I've broken the, the joint and I've gotten into the lip, I take my knife, swing it over, cut through the second abductor muscle, open it up. Uh, you can get, I'm gonna take it off the top. I slide my knife under cut the muscle, slide my, get, make sure there's no shell. If I have any shell, that's what those towels are there to do. Catch that. Slide my clam out. Oh. Of course, this one's gonna give me difficulty. Right, take off the top, and then take my knife, slide it under the abductor, under the abductor here, and free it from the shell, okay? Don't rinse the clams. I've seen people rinse them under cold water. I don't know why they do that. Maybe there's sand in there or something, but you want that juice in there. That's the liquor, that's the, that's the, 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 the flavor. It's part of the flavor. So don't rinse your clams or your oysters before you put them in the half shell. Next, we're gonna open the oysters. And uh, oysters aren't that hard. I always find that oysters are a little less complicated than the clams. So let's get into it. So with the oysters, I have my oyster on a towel and it holds the oyster. Uh, to the table or to the board. I don't like to do oysters in my hand. So uh, what I like to do with this is I like to take the towel and fold it over the oyster and hold the oyster down really firmly. I use my body weight to hold it down, okay? A lot of times what happens is people will push this knife in really hard and they'll slip and they'll, they'll, they'll kind of like go up like this and, and cut themselves. So this is what I do. I find the crook or the joint, and instead of really pushing, really pushing with body weight, I give it a twist. You get in there and give it a twist, and you see how it popped? So instead of using strength, use leverage. Get in there, give it a twist. Use the curve to get under that shell. Get under that shell, use the curve to cut 
your top abductor muscles. So you can see when I go in there, it's, I'm going like this and it's scraping along the, uh, the shell and getting that abductor muscle off. I'm not going like this, okay? So, oh, look at this. This is interesting. So this is what you call a pea crab. Okay, a pea crab is a little crab that lives in oysters. They're not bad, they're actually edible. And when we were on the oyster boat, they said that these are something that you can actually eat. I'm not gonna eat it. Uh, we'll put it aside and see if my son wants to eat it. So what you're gonna see about my oyster here is there's a lot of juice. My oyster is not scrambled. So many times you go to oyster places and this is all scrambled up because the knife has been poking at it. My oyster is whole and the apron is whole. So I just poke my um, knife underneath Cut my abductor muscle. A lot of people like to turn these over. I just like to make sure that it's free. And that's it. I don't do anything else to this. Our oysters are shocked, and I want to show you how to plate them up. It's fairly simple. I have some crushed ice here. I'm lucky enough to have crushed ice on my fridge. If you don't have water and ice on your fridge, you don't know what you're missing. I never wanted it, and I never knew I wanted it until I had it. It's awesome. Uh, if you don't have crushed ice in your uh, fridge, what I would suggest is you can get some ice, put it in a towel, and make kind of like a bundle, and you can hit it on uh, the, the countertop or on the, on the stoop or the porch or the patio, and you can break that ice up. Whenever I had to in restaurants uh, do some oyster specials, that's how I'd crush my ice. I'd just crush it in a towel. The other thing is lemons. Everyone likes to serve lemon with their oysters, and I like a specific, specific way of cutting it. So the lemon has where it's, it's to the tree, and then it has the little, the little uh, butt end, the little, the little <laughs> hiney. Okay, cut off the stem end where it attaches to the tree. You don't need to keep that. And then what you do is you're gonna cut it in half. Okay, you try and leave that little point on the end on each slice. Okay, and you're gonna see why. Because when you take this lemon and try and squeeze it, if I squeeze this lemon, let me move this over, and I squeeze it, and what happens? It makes a funnel or a, a spout for our lemon juice. So you can directionally put your lemon juice if you leave that little end on. And that's the way I like to do it. Okay, so crushed ice, oysters. Uh, the crushed ice not only keeps them cold, it also holds them so that the juice doesn't leak out as much. So this is a nice half dozen oysters. And what I like to do is I have my serving plate here or my plate that I held them on. If there's any juice left over, it goes right back on top so that I have that beautiful juice. Couple of pieces of lemon. And now you could do anything with these oysters. You can roast them if you want. You can make oysters Rockefeller. You could do, you could smoke them. There's so many different things you can do with oysters. This is just the best and the simplest way to do it. We have our oysters, they're plated up. And basically what I would do if I had my clams, if I was eating them on the half shell, top necks for me are a little big for half shell. I like to eat little necks on the half shell. Top necks tend to be a little chewier, a little more to kind of like chew on. So I'm not a big fan of top necks raw, but if you are gonna eat these raw, plate them the same way. Maybe just do a little mix, do some oysters and clams and mix them up on your plate. But that's how you do it. It's really not that hard. It takes practice. I know that it takes practice. And that's how you shut clams and oysters. And that's my method for opening clams and oysters. Uh, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, uh, get your notification bell on so that you know that we have new videos coming out so you don't miss any. Let me know how you feel, if you like my videos or not. Leave comments, I love hearing uh, great comments. Uh, you guys have been extremely supportive. We've only been doing this for about three and a half months. It, and you know, it's kind of a family affair. My wife and my daughter and my son help me, it's wonderful. Uh, so we love to hear your comments. We even like the trolls. The trolls make us giggle all day long. <laughs> Recipes and links to the products and the equipment that I use will be down in the description. I'll leave you the links for the things that I use. People ask me those questions a lot. Uh, and I like to answer the comments when they ask me what equipment I like, but it's easier to just put it in the links below. Check out my other social media. I have Instagram account, at ProtoCooks. I also have a TikTok account that I'm just starting out. There's some goofy stuff on there. Uh, and then we're gonna have food stuff on there as well. We're also planning on doing uh, uh, Instagram Lives on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. It's cocktail hour with Chef Frank. I'll be on for about an hour. I'll answer your questions. We'll have talks, we'll chat. I'll have guests on. I know there's a few people that I'm gonna have on already. So it's six o'clock, pretty much every Wednesday night. Uh, I'm gonna try and do it every Wednesday night. It, I, I will announce it on my Instagram. So keep track of my Instagram account to see when that's gonna happen. We now have merch.
Need salt shirts, okay? Uh, need salt mugs, totes, kids shirts, and hoodies. Yeah, hoodies, I almost forgot the hoodies. Uh, they're all below here or below on the screen below with Teespring. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks.